Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com and welcome to another episode of Watch and Learn. Today, I'm kind of going back to sizing bracelets and why. Well, I, I did a three-part mini-series, if you will, on sizing bracelets. It had to be uh, probably about 18 months ago, you know, maybe even more than that. I did sizing friction cotter pin bracelets. I did sizing your folded link bracelets and then I did the Seiko pin and collar bracelet. Um, and it's the pin and collar one that really needs to just totally be revisited. Why? Well, the newer watches, and some of the older ones as well, still use the pin and collar system, but the collar is in another spot. And if you're not looking for it, it will drive you bananas when you go to size it or when you try to put the, you think you have the collar and you know where it goes, you go to put it back in and you're gonna curse your brains out for a while. Um, I actually did that on a watch that I sized not too long ago. So I figured, let me shoot a couple of videos. It's gonna be at least, I'm thinking at least two. Today's is gonna be sizing the Saarb 033 and 035. Um, I'll do another one, I think, for the Turtles and the Samurais. Uh, why the 033 and the 035, the watch is discontinued? It is, but because they're discontinued, they're gonna be flying on the used market, I'm sure. And a lot of people out there are going to purchase them and they're gonna have to size it for themselves and they need to know how. So this video hopefully will give you an idea about it. I totally switched it up. I'm wearing uh, my Navitimer, uh, Brightly Navitimer. This is pretty cool. And this watch with me has a lot of, this style has a lot of history for me personally, uh, even though I've only had it for like five years. I, I've, I know this watch from the 80s. And an Orient, uh, Two timer actually the it's got a uh, quartz and an auto the quartz side of the watch is dead this side I don't care because I like the auto side it's got those flippy windows and stuff and the exposed dials is pretty cool anyway uh, let's head on over and check out how to size the Seiko Sarb 033 and 035 bracelet I have here my personal Sarb 033 that's S A R B 033 and what I'm going to show you in this video will work with this watch or the SARB035, which is the cream dial version of the same watch. I'm not sure if the bracelet is shared with, this exact bracelet is shared with any other models, but these two by far and wide uh, are the most popular models uh, that have this configuration of bracelet. So I'm not gonna size my actual bracelet. I do have just uh, a half of a bracelet assembly. Yes, the part's been. Uh, half a bracelet assembly uh, that I'm going to do it on. But I want to let you know that if so, if you're going to do your watch, you know, what you would want to do, I, I always think it's easiest so that the whole thing isn't flopping around, is to just use a, uh, just to take advantage, excuse me, of the quick release pin that's right here. Here I've zoomed in on it, and you just take any kind of, any, any of your sharp pin tools, narrow, and you just press push and it'll release out on you hopefully there it goes and now the whole watch opens and, and you can size it easily without everything flopping around but let's uh let's go over to my little half a bracelet and take it from there so when we look at the bracelet you know I, I should have mentioned this the first thing we see on the clasp are two holes here this is the extent of the micro adjustment and this is one of the things I know that people complain about that there's only a two position micro adjustment but that just exists that you know if your wrist size moves a little bit like let's say if your wrist uh, shrunk a little bit due to weather or whatever you can move that spring pin over from this hole to this hole and it will make the bracelet a little bit tighter um, but other than, other than that you have to start doing the links uh, removing links replacing links whatever and of course you always want to do one on each side if you're doing two if you're doing three two on one side one on the other so you want to try to keep it even let's um so let's get into it so we see some arrows and of course those arrows are handy it means First of all, the arrows mean that these are the replaceable links. These are the ones, uh, removable links. These are the ones that you want to remove and replace. Uh, you want to try to not take out these. On this watch, I don't know if it matters, but on others, you know, the taper is different, uh, the size is different, and sometimes they're just permanent, never meant to be taken off. You're going to drive the pin out in the direction of the arrow and uh, pull it all the way out. So let, let's do that. So I have... I have my trusty block here. I like to use this little thing. It's nice. It holds everything upright. It's, it's got holes in the bottom for pieces to fly through. Um, but you can use whatever you want. You can probably do this in your lap if you want, you know, with just a, uh, 
you know, just a pin pusher, you know, even something on the edge of a, a spring bar tool, whatever, and just, and just push it through. But I'm going to do the professional method uh, and do it this way. Um, let me, the bracelet actually is not seated in the block. Let me do that. The bracelet's in the block. I look, there's the arrows. I put the tool in to the, into the little hole and I'm just gonna use my hammer and I'm going to tap on it with the metal side and it goes right through and it just released. So I'm gonna take the whole thing out and let's see if anything's, the pin is missing. Okay, so the pin is under the block. There it is. Okay, now, here we go, ready? So I remove the tool, it's out, I look. There's nothing on it, there's no collar stuck to it. I'm gonna put it on a side for now, it's gonna roll. Of course, I'm not on a very flat surface. I'm going to pull the bracelet apart. Now here is where the interesting part happens. I turn this on its side. This is the center link and I tap. There's nothing coming out, but I can see it. You see it right there? See that little thing in there, that little tube? So it didn't come out, which is kind of good, um, but there's a very good chance that when you flip the bracelet up, it will come out and you'll lose it. So I'm going to actually just push it out so we can, so we can take a look at it. So there it is on the end of the tool. You see it right there? This is the collar. Uh, the collar is not on the outside like I did in the other video. It is on the inner link, which you might say, why would they do that? Well, it makes it so much easier to put back together. Uh, if you recall that other video, you needed a third hand, you know, almost to, to put the whole thing back together. In this case, because the collar is captivated inside of the center link, it's held in place. It makes it so much easier to put back together. And hopefully your eyes are sharp. If you look, the hole on this side, this hole is larger, it's a larger bore than the hole in this side. So this this collar that I took out that's still on the edge of my tool, that's sticking to my gloves, it actually won't fit in here. I can push all I want. It's not going to fit. I mean, I'd have to really crunch it up and jam it in, but it will go right into here. So let's, let's shelve that conversation for a minute and uh, let's talk a little bit more about the bracelet. So now if I wanted to remove another link, well, you have to, right? I gotta remove another pin. You can't just remove a link. To remove a link, uh, you can't just remove a pin. You have to remove at least two pins to get rid of one link. I would do the same process again. Drive it through, pull out the pin, watch for the collar, pull off the link, and then let's say that's all I wanted to, all I wanted to do. Then I have to go and put it back together. So the mistake a lot of people will make. So they'll have it together. They'll drop in the pin, not realizing that there was a collar in there that fell out onto their tabletop or wherever, and that's it. I've just pressed it in with my finger. So you can imagine what's going to happen, even if I drive it all the way down. If, if you don't believe me, I'll drive it down with my hammer. There it is. Bracelets, so the person goes, oh, bracelets together. They come out of the, the jewelry store or the, the mall kiosk. That's my favorite where they had it done. And their watch is together. They hit the parking lot or they get home and bam -o, it falls right out and that's it. So let's see what happens when I go to push the pin out. It just comes, see how easy that came out? So it's just a straight pin. I just wanted to check it out so you can see it. I, there, I don't think they are directional at all. It doesn't matter. Um, one, so, one head, one size doesn't have a larger head than the other. Uh, they are kind of ambidextrous, if you will. Uh, either way, you can drive them in from either side. So now let's, let's put the bracelet back together the correct way. So now we grab the collar with the tweezers or our hands or whatever. I, can't, I certainly cannot do it with gloves. Um, and then we're gonna put it back in here. Now remember, one side is smaller than the other. So you want to put it into the actually the larger side because it won't fit in the other side. So that's kind of good. I'm trying to get it to drop in. It just dropped in. It won't slide through because this side is smaller in diameter and it's locked in there. Okay, so now I'm going to put it back, put the bracelet back together and I'm going to push the pin in. And normally, you know, you go against the direction of the arrow because the arrow is for removal so against it will be the direction for installation. Um, I'm not sure if it really makes much of a difference but we'll just follow convention and we'll do it the right way that they want us to. So we'll get the pin in there and it may just take a little bit of uh, once it's kind of in now I know that at least the bracelet is more or less locked together at least on one side and I'm going to put it in the block and gentle taps with the hammer and it will find its home. Uh, let's put it down there we go couple of hammer taps. 
So there it's almost all the way in. It's probably, so what happens now is it's got to find, it's, it's through the collar at this point. It just has to find its way through the bottom of this end link. Um, so you may have to play with it a little bit, open it and close it a little bit, you know, the gap, you know, jiggle it while you're hammering and it will eventually find its home and slip right in. And there it goes. So you might want to take your pusher now and just kind of scooch it a little bit just to make it a, just barely sub flush. And I will do that. There we go. So now it's under the surface a little bit. And that's it. Uh, presto, you have now sized your SARB. And, uh, you know, if you're removing links and replacing links, you don't know exactly how many you want to do. Obviously, you don't have to replace it all the way. Um, you don't even need to use the collar if you're just putting it on your own wrist just to kind of check out if your sizing is correct and, and then that way you don't waste too much time. This has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com showing you how to size the pin and collar bracelet on the Saab 033 and also the 035. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to the channel if you have not done so and if you have any questions or comments, put them down below and I will be sure to address them as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.